was the night before Christmas. It was snowy and cold, a night I will always remember. The story I'm about to share with you took place in a little town called Inkadink in the upper peninsula of the state of Michigan near the Canadian border, a place where the air is clean and the water is clear. My wife May had recently passed away. Both of our children, Betty and Phil, were fully grown, starting their own families, and had moved far away. As I added another log into the fireplace, I began to recall the memories of my life. My thoughts were interrupted by the chime of an old-fashioned wind-up clock hanging on the wall. It was now 10 o'clock and midnight was fast approaching. This would be the first Christmas Eve I would spend alone in many years. The mere thought of being alone was a bitter pill to swallow. Just the mere thought of being alone, alone, did not seem fair. I had lived a good life. I would question now, was this the final chapter of a once blissful and joyful life? My thoughts were interrupted. It was at that moment I glanced upon an old antique box. In the box were many photos of days gone by. I then opened the box and began going through the hundreds of snapshots that May and I had taken. The photos of my wife May and our two children, Betty and Phil, brought tears to my eyes. I remember vividly having to pause for a moment to pull out a handkerchief from my pocket to wipe my weeping eyes. My sorrow was interrupted by a comforting voice, an almost familiar voice, the voice uttering the following words, you need to find your joy. I then continued going through the rest of the photos that I was holding in my hand. As I got to the end of the stack, there was a photo of a puppet that I had created for a man named Jim Swenson who had a popular children's TV show. And it was at that moment I once again heard the comforting voice. The phrase was once again repeated, you need to find your joy. My mind quickly recalled that I still had one of the puppets that I had created for the TV show in the crate up in the attic. Like a child anxiously waiting to open his Christmas gift, I without hesitation headed towards the attic. Within a matter of seconds I located the crate and dusted it off before opening it. And there was little Stevie Thunder, just as I had last seen him many years before. I quickly lifted him from the crate and cradled him in my arms like a newborn babe. I returned to the living room and spent the next hour and a half reacquainting myself with my little long lost friend. It was now approaching midnight, so I decided it was time to go to bed. I then placed the puppet under the Christmas tree, and as I lay in bed, I felt a peace come over me. I had found my joy. But alas, little Stevie was only a puppet. If only he were real and could talk, what a lovely world it would be. I then rolled over and dozed off to sleep. In the middle of the night, I was awakened by the sound of bells coming from what sounded like the living room area. As I walked cautiously to investigate the chimes coming from the living room, I was amazed to discover that my prayer had been answered. Little Stevie had come to life. The only explanation I can share with you now is that it was a miracle.